The Kraft Food Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, makers and importers of the world's favorite cheese, now brings you a triumph of cheese making. It's Kraft Natural Swiss Cheese, sliced and sealed by Kraft for your convenience. Natural Swiss Cheese is the kind with the holes. Try Kraft Natural Swiss soon. We're sure you'll like this new convenient way of buying Swiss cheese. It will become one of your favorites. Everything is in a hubbub. Ready knows, cause she's the hub of the bottom. Mr. Gillsleeve's not one to spend New Year's Eve night clubbing with the girls. She prefers to stay home by the fire with one girl. And it's up to Bertie to fix a cozy little midnight supper for him. Now, don't go to any trouble, Bertie. Oh, no, sir. You're just a little cold snack. Yes, sir. Some ham and potato salad and some of that turkey left over from Christmas. It's guilty there ain't no turkey left. No? That gobbler's been gobbled. <laughs> well, you'll have the ham and the potato salad. And a cheese tray. And a shrimp cocktail would be nice to start on. Yes, sir. And some hot biscuits, since everything else will be cold. Yes, sir. And coffee, of course, since we'll be up late. Is that going to be too much for you, Bertie? Oh, no, sir. If you want me to, Bertie will sing old Lang Syne while serving a flaming dessert. <laughs> Thank you, Bertie. I just want something simple. <laughs> yes, sir. What time is this show coming over? Well, I'm going for her as soon as I see Leroy off to his party. That Leroy sure is excited. He's walking on air tonight. Well, it's his first New Year's Eve at a party away from home. And taking a girl. Yeah. Leroy has good judgment when it comes to girls. In fact, I wouldn't let him go out tonight if he wasn't going with Babs. No, sir. I guess it's all right for him to ride to the party in Dinky's old car. Oh, I think it'll be all right if Dinky keeps kerosene in that lantern so he'll have a taillight. Yeah. Oh, parent has a lot to consider these days, Bertie. Oh, yes, sir. We have to avoid taking undue chances. Mm hmm. Avoid pitfalls. Mm -hmm. Raise him to be a perfect gentleman. Culture. Dig. Oh, he's a little gentleman, all right. Oh, my goodness. How do I look, Unc? Fine, my boy, but I wouldn't jump like that. You'll knock the set out of your cufflinks. I'm not wearing cufflinks. It's you're not? Heck no, I got my sleeves rolled up. We're dancing the shag tonight, man. It... <laughs> Leroy, put on your cufflinks. I'm not going to have a shaggy nephew. Just kidding, huh? And you be careful out in that car tonight. Oh, sure. But I sure hope Dinky has the top down. No top on a cold night like this? I didn't know that car had a top. Yeah, it's an old beach umbrella. <laughs> well, I got to go. Now, Leroy, be careful. And remember what I said about coming home right after midnight. Oh, sure. Brush me off, will you, Bertie? Okay. Right after the New Year, New Year rings in, I want you to be ringing the doorbell. All right. How's my tie, Bertie? Uh, Leroy, you aren't listening to what I'm saying. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Now, what did I say? You said, be careful, come home early, and mind my manners. Yeah, I didn't say mind your manners, but do it. Okay. So long, Bertie. Bye, Leroy. See you next year, Ron. Next year? Oh. <laughs> that boy. Well, he better come home early next year. Hey, Bertie, will have a nice supper for us later, Irene. Hey, this is the way I like to spend New Year's Eve. So do I. With just a small group of intimate friends. You bet. 
And the fewer, the better. <laughs> Come in, Irene. Let me take your coat. Oh, thank you. Oh, your house looks so festive. Well, we like to keep the Christmas tree up through New Year's. We'll have our supper over here by the fire. Wonderful. You thought of everything, Throckmorton, even paper hats and two horns on the mantle. Yeah, his and hers. <laughs> hey, let's sit here on the couch. Evening, Miss Henshaw. Hello, Bertie. Happy New Year to you both. Bertie, it isn't New Year yet. It is New York. I just heard it on the radio and it's moving west. <laughs> We'll wait. Right here on the sofa. Yes, sir. Bertie will let you know the minute it hits Chicago. <laughs> ah, it is! All right, Bertie. Bertie has a wonderful disposition, hasn't she? Yeah. Miss Gilfie's resident. Oh, hello, Miss Marjorie. It must be your niece. And a happy New Year to you. And Marjorie never forgets your old uncle. Yes, ma'am. He's here. Miss Gilfie's. Coming, Bertie. Excuse me, Irene. Say hello for me. Yes, indeed. Uh, thank you, Bertie. Yes, sir. Hello, my dream, my dear. Archie, I thought I'd call and say Happy New Year before you left the house. Oh, I'm staying home this year. Alone? Well, not exactly alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Miss Henshaw must be there. You bet. And she sends her greetings to you. Well, thank you. How's your little family? Oh, wonderful. We all send you and Leroy our love, and Miss Henshaw, of course. Oh, thank you, my dear. Uh, Leroy went to his first New Year's party tonight. <laughs> you sound worried about him, Monkey. Well. You used to worry the same way about me. Yes, and it paid off. You're happily married and the mother of twins. That's more than I can say for Leroy. <laughs> Oh, thank you, my dear. A kiss even before the bells begin to ring. <laughs> Goodbye, Uncle. Ta-ta! Why, George, there's a fine niece. Marjorie's a lovely girl. For a bachelor, Uncle, you did very well raising a family, Throckmorton. Well, I'll admit I've had some anxious moments since my sister passed on and left Marjorie and Leroy in my care. Oh. Yeah, and I have a lot of pleasant memories, too. It's a big job for a man to do alone. Yeah, I've seen the time when I could have used a little help, all right. Gee, I was snowed under along about the time Margie was getting married. It was probably frantic at the time, but it must be fun to look back on now. Yeah. First, Margie surprised all of us and got engaged to Bronco. He was a fine fellow. Mm -hmm. And then there was the business of planning a big wedding, getting out the invitations. A lot of responsibility. Now, I'll never forget, I came home one evening and good old Bertie met me. Got you home, Miss Gilfleet? Yes, Bertie. The wedding invitations just came. Well, good. And here's the bill. Let's see. Zeke. <laughs> they must be engraved in solid gold. Yes, sir. Well, let's open them. Hey, what did that guy bring, Aunt? Your Marjorie's wedding invitations, Leroy. Yeah, let me see them. How many are there? Well, we ordered 200. Yes, sir. Everybody in Summerfield wants to see Miss Marjorie married. 200? Gosh, they'll have to put bleachers in the church. Well, everyone we send invitations to isn't supposed to attend the wedding. They're just supposed to send presents. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gilsey's going to get his money back somehow. <laughs> Bertie. What's going on, Uncle? Oh, your wedding invitations just arrived, Marjorie. Oh, they did? Yeah. You're going to get married. <laughs> I know, Leroy. Hey, why does the bride have to pay for everything? It's very simple, my boy. If the groom had to pay, he wouldn't have enough left to start housekeeping. <laughs> I'm afraid this is just the beginning, Anki. Oh? Well, there'll have to be a cake and things for the reception, and flowers for the church, an organist, a soloist, and we have to furnish dresses for the bridesmaids. Hmm, I wonder if I can get a government loan for this project. Anki? <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we won't have to buy you a wedding dress. Well, are you sure Mother's wedding dress is here? It must be. Well, Bertie and I searched the attic. If it's here, it must be in that old trunk of yours. Yeah, I guess so. Come on, Marjorie. Let's go up and find it. 
Oh, that must be Bronco. I can't go now, Unky. Why not? Bring Bronco along. He can move the trunk. Uncle Mort, the groom can't see the bride's dress before the wedding. Oh, for corn's sake. A groom doesn't do anything. He doesn't pay for anything. He don't even have to look at anything. Leroy. Uncle, where's the key to the trunk? Uh, I have it. Yeah, hinge is pretty rusty. Hey, what's this tied with a blue ribbon? One of Marge's curls? No, it isn't quite the right color. I imagine it's yours. Mine? That sissy curl? <laughs> of course. You were a very cute little boy, Leroy. Ah. Uh, uh, here's a note pinned to it. Yeah? Throckmorton's curl at age five. <laughs> Guess you were pretty cute, too, Unc. <laughs> Never mind. Let's look for the wedding dress. What color is it? It's white and lacy, Leroy. Oh, here it is. Hey, that's pretty. If you think the dress is pretty, take a look at this picture of your mother wearing it. My mother? Taken on her wedding day. My little sister. Gosh, she was beautiful. Yeah, Marjorie's just like her. Here's it. Oh, letter she wrote when she sent me the picture. Look at that postmark. June 17th, 1929. 1929? I wasn't even born yet. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, let's see what the letter says. She wrote better than me and Marge, didn't she? Your beautiful hand, Leroy. Beautiful. Dear Throckmorton, I thought you'd like to have a picture of your sister on the happiest day of her life. Marge feels the same way. Why does everybody feel so happy when they get married? No, Leroy, I'm reading your mother's letter. Oh, sure. I suppose we won't see each other for a long, long time. But I keep telling myself our family isn't breaking up. I'm just starting a new one. Charles and I want two boys and two girls. Well, she had one boy and one girl. You and Marjorie, Leroy. Yeah. Let's see what else she says. It'll be the joy of my life to watch my children grow up and see them as happily married as I am. Gosh, did Mother say that? Yes, she did. What's the matter, Unc? Nothing, nothing, my boy. Well, I guess we better close the trunk and get on down. Well, we took the wedding dress down to Marjorie. She was a beautiful bride in it, Irene. I'm sure she was. When do I get to see your curl tied in a blue ribbon? I hid that. <laughs> but the dress is back in the trunk. I'm waiting for Leroy's bride to use it if she wants to wear it. All right, George, I wonder what Leroy is doing now. I wish I'd asked him to phone during the evening. I've never seen anyone so foolish about a boy. Well, I've brought him along this far in life, and I don't want to make any mistakes now. Staying out after midnight is something new for Leroy. Well, I imagine he feels quite the little man tonight. Yeah. You know, one good thing about it, it gives us a chance to greet the new year and each other all alone. Throckmorton, we've already greeted each other. Not the way we will at midnight. I... <laughs> 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 Yes. Do I have to wait until the stroke of 12? You don't want to rush New Year's, do you? You bet. <laughs> For that matter, as Bertie said, it's New Year's somewhere right now. Oh, Throckmorton. We could be kissing every hour on the hour. <laughs> Happy New Year, Irene. Oh, my goodness, who could be at the door? I'll get it, Miss Gilsey. You don't suppose it's Leroy home already? Leroy? Good evening, Bertie. Oh, this is easy. Peavy? Over. Oh, Happy New Year, Bertie. Happy New Year. Come in. Isn't it a little late for Mr. Peavy? Yeah, I hope he doesn't stick around all night. Miss Gilsey even got company. Yes, yes. Come in, Peavy. Oh, hello, Mr. Jonas Peavy. <laughs> Good evening, Miss Henshaw. Hello, Mr. Peavy. I uh, hope I'm not intruding. Not at all. Oh, no. I came by to wish you a Happy New Year. Thanks, Mr. Peavy. Oh, 
Thank you, Mr. Peavy. It is very nice of you, Peavy. I'd like to invite you to stay and see the old year out, but you can see all we have is two horns. No, that's all right. I brought my own. <laughs> Good heavens. Phoebe, that sounds like a moose call. Yes, an old goose with a moose call. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What a New Year's. Yes, don't worry, Mr. Jones, Levi. I'll take it long home before midnight. Well, it was nice of you to drop by, but I was sure you'd want to be home with Mrs. Phoebe at kissing time. Well, no, I wouldn't get... <laughs> well, you might have something like that. Yeah, that a boy, Phoebe. Happy New Year to you both. The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. How long has it been since you've had some good golden natural Swiss cheese? Natural Swiss, that's the kind with the holes. Well, tomorrow, treat yourself to a package of Kraft. Natural Swiss cheese. Natural Swiss that's sliced and sealed by Kraft in convenient packages. This is very special Swiss cheese with heart of the cheese goodness all through it. In wheels of natural Swiss, there's a difference between the cheese at the center or heart of the wheel and the cheese at the outside edges. The cheese at the center of the wheel has finer flavor and more tender texture. But Kraft Natural Swiss is special. Every bit of it has that wonderful heart of the cheese goodness. Every bit of this natural Swiss has perfect nut-sweet flavor and fine texture. Kraft Natural Swiss. Kraft slices this cheese and seals it for you in airtight packages. A half pound of this good cheese with the holes to the package. Get a package of Kraft Natural Swiss tomorrow. Make some natural Swiss and rye bread sandwiches. Or have this cheese with crackers and your favorite cold drink. Enjoy it with fruit for dessert. Whichever way you serve it, you'll be delighted with this fine, natural Swiss with heart of the cheese goodness all through Kraft Natural Swiss Cheese. He sure teased Mr. Gilsleeve and Miss Henshaw. But he went home in time for Mr. Gilsleeve to get a little lipstick on his cheek. The midnight supper I prepared went off well. But before I was through clearing the dishes, Mr. Gilsleeve was worrying about Leroy again. You're a fine supper, Bertie. I'm sorry Leroy missed it. Thank you, sir. Certainly was a good supper. I love your potato salad, Bertie, and that cheese tray. Thank you, Miss Henshaw. You better put a plate in the refrigerator for Leroy, Bertie. He may not have had enough to eat at the party. Well, if I know Leroy, he started the New Year right if there was any food around. Well... That boy won't pay any attention to girls if there's any food to make eyes at. <laughs> well, he isn't exactly at ease around girls. Like his uncle. Yeah, he's practically a Don Juan compared to what he was a couple of years ago. It's a wonder Babs will still go out with him. Oh? Yes, yeah, she invited him to his first dance. <laughs> Getting Leroy to go was like pulling a burrow out of a clover patch. <laughs> when she came over to ask him, I had to do the accepting. Leroy stood around. Oh, good evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, hello, Babs. Come in. Thank you. Hello, Leroy. Hi. Leroy, don't you know how to answer a lady when she speaks to you? I said hi. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's nice to see you, Babs. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. What's on your mind? Oop. Leroy, you don't ask a lady what's on her mind? Well, I didn't expect an answer. I was just being sociable. <laughs> I came over to ask you something, Leroy. Yeah? What? Leroy, you don't say, yeah, what? Oh, uh, why don't you talk to her? <laughs> I was only reminding you of your manners, my boy. Babs is a lady, and you're a gentleman. Okay. I was wondering, would you like to take me to the cotillion tomorrow night, Leroy? To the what? A dance, my boy. You've heard of the cotillion? It's at Mrs. Murphy's seminary. It'll be awfully nice. I'd like to have you take me, Leroy. 
if you're not busy. He'd love to go, Babs. I would. What time? <laughs> what time, Babs? Be at my house at 7 o'clock. Uncle Rumson will drive us over. Yeah, but... Yeah, that's fine, and thank you very much for asking him, Babs. Leroy will be there at 7 o'clock. See you tomorrow, then. Good night, Leroy. Good night. Good night, Mr. Gildersleeve. Good night, Babs. Oh, what did you want to get me into that for? For corn's sake. Well, Leroy, this is a very important affair. And you like Babs. She's a fine little girl. She's okay, but, gee, Unc, I can't dance. You can, too. It'll be a lot of fun. You wait. They'll have fruit punch and cookies. All you can eat. Yeah? <laughs> You'll enjoy it. You can't dance while you're eating, can you? Certainly not. How long will it last? About three hours, from eight to eleven. Why? I wonder if I can keep eating that long. <laughs> what a boy. Leroy, forget about food and concentrate on the social break. So you see, Irene, I practically had to push Leroy out the door on his first date. And tonight, years later, he's out with the same girl. Well, I have to take credit for that. And I hope to chart his future course as successfully as I did Marjorie's. He couldn't do better than Babs. You practically have the match made, haven't you, Throckmorton? No, Irene, I'm not picking the boy's sweetheart. It just happens, fortunately, that Babs is the only girl he's ever taken an interest in. One morning when Margie was still living at home, Leroy came down to breakfast. And we saw he'd started to grow up. <laughs> All of a sudden, he was jealous of another boy. <laughs> Seems he thought a boy named Tiger David would take a shot. Can we hurry up breakfast? Hi, everybody. Good morning, Leroy. Leroy, you're wearing your good suit. Well, sure. What's wrong with that? Do I smell shaving lotion on you, my boy? <laughs> well, I, I borrowed a little of yours. Check out my face. Used to it. I may be shaving before very long. Well, you look very nice. But do you think you should be wearing your good suit to school? You have clean blue jeans, Leroy. Well, jeans are okay, but I might as well get some use out of this suit. I'll be growing out of it soon. Yes, you will. Uh, Leroy, why do you keep watching the window? Well, I don't want to miss Babs when she starts for school. What's this? You're going to walk to school with Babs? Well, get with her, Marge. The girl has books to carry. <laughs> oh. Oh, she's coming out of her house now. Excuse me? Yeah, I suppose so, my boy. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, Leroy. Now I've seen everything. Wait a minute, Babs. Oh, hello, Leroy. I'm walking you to school. You are? Here, give me your books. You really want to carry my book? Well, you can't carry your own books. The guy carries the books. Get with it. <laughs> all right. All right. How about meeting you after school and carrying them back? Why, Leroy. And uh, how about coming over tonight and doing homework together? Leroy, what's happened to you? <gasps> Leroy, are you using perfume? <laughs> Shaving lotion. <laughs> Shaving lotion? Oh, <laughs> Leroy, why don't you act your age? That's just what I'm doing. <laughs> What's so funny? What are you laughing at? You're acting so silly, just like that Tiger Davis. You mean you don't like Tiger Davis? <laughs> he thinks he's so smart. But I thought he isn't my type at all. He isn't? You don't have to be jealous of him. Shall we cross the street? Okay. What are you stopping for? Leroy, boys old enough to use shaving lotion usually help girls across the street. What? Oh, oh yeah, sure. Let me take your hand. Thank you. It's okay. What kind of boys are your type? This tiger isn't. I like boys who are, well, more natural. Like who? Well, right now, you're sort of natural. I don't feel natural. (laughs) 
Leroy. Yeah, Bab. We're across the street, and you're still holding my hand. I know. <laughs> Those children over there are giggling at us. I'll let them giggle. They'll grow up someday. Come on, Bab. Don't pay any attention to those juvenile adolescents. Quite a milestone in the boy's life, Irene. Wouldn't it be strange if their friendship someday blossomed into real romance? It could be. You know what they say about childhood sweethearts. Frost Morton, you're the only Cupid I know who smokes cigars. <laughs> well, I'm no Cupid. But someday it may take a well-directed arrow to get Leroy off the dime. <laughs> few more New Year's Eves and he'll be phoning you like Marjorie, sending greetings from his family. Yeah. Happy New Year from Leroy and Babs. And baby makes three. <laughs> I see you have it all planned. Well, I'd like to see Leroy as happily married as Marjorie is. Uh, that boy should be getting home. You're getting sleepy. I'm afraid sitting up for New Year's is too much for you. You oh, no, no, it's been a fine evening. Uh. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I'd better go to the kitchen and see if Bertie has some more coffee. Yeah, I guess we could use a cup while we're waiting for Leroy. Well, like Irene says, a few more years and Leroy just might be married. <laughs> My work with the boy won't be done until that's accomplished. I wish his ears didn't stick out so much. <laughs> Yeah, they say love is blind. <laughs> Someday Babs may say I do. If she can get Leroy to ask her. Yes, Babs? Where's Leroy? Hasn't he shown up yet? No. The minister's waiting in the church. It's full of people. Oh, my goodness. I wonder if he got cold feet and lit out across country in Dickie's old car. What'll we do, Mr. Gildersleeve? What'll we do? Yeah, Babs, don't get nervous. Stop pulling the pedals off your corsage. Oh, wait till I get that boy home. You won't get him home, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm taking him home with me. <laughs> Well, I hope so. You know, here comes Peavy. He has the ring. He might know where Leroy is. Uh, Peavy! Oh, hello, Mr. Jonas Lee. Bad. Peavy, where's Leroy? You're the best man. Well, Leroy's the best man. He's getting the girl. <laughs> Mr. Peavy, he can't leave me waiting at the church. And Leroy's a little nervous. He tied his tie and drove down here and then discovered he forgot to put on a shirt. Oh. <laughs> oh, You was that? You was your father. Ah! Who's your ass? Who's your ass? Wake up! Who's your boss? Wake up! Ah! Wake up! Here I am! Oh, Leroy. Young man, you're late for your wedding. What wedding? I just got back from the party. Happy New Year! Party? New Year? Oh, oh, yes. What's this about a wedding? Yes, never mind, my boy. Gee, I thought I had him married. Now I have to go through all that again. Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. Take rye bread and natural Swiss cheese for sandwiches, add your favorite cold drink, and there's a snack. An old favorite snack with special goodness when you use Kraft natural Swiss cheese. This good golden cheese with the holes has heart of the cheese goodness in every bite. Kraft slices it and seals it airtight in half-pound packages. Get a package tomorrow. Enjoy this wonderful cheese with the special goodness, Kraft Natural Swiss Cheese.